3.1 day two. So here's where we pick up from yesterday. We talked about finding a vertex, changing an equation to the standard form or vertex form when we could find a vertex. And now today it goes to graphing them and that without a calculator. And then as well, um, word problems that maybe could come about, you know, that have this type of equation. So procedures for graphing quadratics. First, identify important coefficients. So in other words, like here is, here's a, um, a function right here that we'll use as I go through this. I see that the A value is greater than zero. That means I know that it opens up. Okay. Another thing that I also see, which comes about number five, but I think it's just as important as this one here, is that it has a y-intercept of negative six. Whatever the number is that doesn't have a letter with it, that is your y-intercept, okay? So I know it's going to be a parabola that opens up, and I know it's going to cross the y-axis at negative 6. So those are probably the first two things that I make a note of. And I'm going to go here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I know it crosses the y-axis right there. Okay. The second thing is to find any x-intercepts. How you find x-intercepts is you take your function and you set it equal to zero and you solve it, okay? So if I take this right here, 3x squared minus 3x minus 6 and set it equal to zero, I could take and factor this. Again, you did this last year. You did it in Algebra 1 as well. Here to factor it, it looks like I can factor a 3 out, which would be x squared minus x minus 2. And then that factors even further as x minus 2 and x plus 1. And when I set them each equal to 0, it's x equals 2 and x equals negative 1. These are the x-intercepts. So plot them. Here's 2. Here's negative 1. So it's like you're gathering information, you know, as you're going through and you're graphing these. Then next it says find the vertex and the axis of symmetry. Well, you might remember from yesterday, the x value of the vertex is x equals negative b over 2a. So if I take those values from this equation, negative b is going to be 3. 2 times a is going to be 6. So it's saying at x equals 1 half is the axis of symmetry. So that is that, whoops, that's needs to be over a little bit more. Here's my axis of symmetry. And my vertex has that x value. So it is a point that has the x value of 1 half. In order to find the y value, I have to plug it in here and find what f of 1 half is. I don't really have much room up there, so I'll do it down here. So I'm going to plug 1 half in. It's 3 times 1 half squared minus 3 times 1 half minus 6. Now, there are two of you. I know which two it is, but the question is, do you know which two it is? I have two of you that are distributing the 3 to this and then squaring it. That is against order of operations back from Algebra 1. You have to square this first, then multiply by the 3. Okay? When you get your test back, you'll know because I wrote you a note on your test. Okay? So this ends up giving me 3 fourths. When I multiply this by this, I have minus 3 halves and then minus 6. And here's the part that you might dislike the most, and that is combining those terms with fractions. Okay? I know they're not your favorite, but you know what? You'll get pretty good at them this year and even better in calculus. Calculus has a ton of them. Okay, so I need common denominators here for each of these terms. I need them to be the same. This one already has the 4. This one here I'm going to have to multiply by 2 on the top and bottom in order to get the bottom to be a 4. That gives me a 6 up there. And this one has a 1 in the denominator, so I'm going to have to multiply it by 4 on the top and bottom. 
so 24. So 3 minus 6 is negative 3, and negative 3 minus 24 is negative 27 fourths. So that means our vertex is at this point right here. Now negative 27 fourths, what is that? Negative 6 and 3 fourths? Is that about right? So if I go to the right one, and I go down, or is that negative 7? Mm. No, that's 28. That's, that's right, right? 6, 24, 25, 6, 8, okay. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 3 fourths. That's right in here. The axis of symmetry holds on to that vertex. Okay, they should be, it should be on that. And then from there, See what else we have, the y-intercept, which I already did that part, and then sketch the graph. So you've just gathered all of this information. Now, your axis of symmetry is the line that cuts it in half. Whatever's on one side is also on the other side. So you see how you have this one point on the left side of that line? That means you also have that point on this side of that line. Do you see how these are evenly spaced as well? One's on the left, one's on the right. And so then from there we take and we graph it. So what happened is this thing stretched out vertically. Do you remember when you have a three multiplied in the front? How that's a vertical stretch of three? It's three times as long as what it originally started. You know, we could use that as well. Now, another option on this, which we didn't do it on this, but we could have, we could have taken this and used the completing the square to rewrite it into vertex form. Okay, we didn't do that, but we certainly could have done that to it as well. Um, instead, we use this negative b over 2a, which is a lot of times a little more quick, you know, defining it. Questions on that? Questions? And that's why you know, you'll have workspace to show your work, you know, like I can figure all of it out. So just show me your work so I know, especially if you make a mistake, then I can at least find where you went wrong. Okay. Hopefully you don't, but you know, you might. This one here is given in vertex form. When it's given in vertex form, well, you can right off the bat find the vertex. What is the vertex for this one? Came from yesterday. Yeah, Brian? Negative 1, 3. We got it. So I'd probably graph that. Negative 1, 3. Every time I get a piece of information, I come over here and graph it. It's just, it's like building a snowman. You know, you build the head, then the body, then the, I guess you do the base first, probably, huh? You have to have that first. <laughs> and then you put the carrot and everything else on it that you're going to, you know. But it's, it's just like building a snowman. You're like, you just have to make sure you collect the different pieces you need to put it together. If I go through the steps on the last slide, the first step said, find any um, coefficients that you know are important to you. So this negative two, that's my A value. My A value is less than zero. That means it opens down. The 3, when it's in this form, is not your y-intercept. That's only if it's in the other form. Your y-intercept, however, is always the point 0 and then a number. So what you could do is you could plug a 0 in for the x in order to find that y-intercept. Negative 2 times 0 plus 1 squared plus 3 is negative 2 plus 3 or 1. So 0, 1 is the y-intercept. If I know the vertex is negative 1, 3, then don't I also know that the axis of symmetry is x equals whatever that x value is, negative 1. So here's my axis of symmetry. I also need my x-intercepts. My x-intercepts. <laughs> are always in the form something zero. In other words, if it's in this form, 
I can plug a zero in for the y value. So I get zero equals negative two times x plus one squared plus three, and I could solve this. I could take and move the three to the other side. So negative three equals negative two times x plus one squared. This is not the only way I could do it. This is the fastest way. Next, I could divide both sides by that negative two. So three halves, or 1.5 if you prefer, equals x plus one squared. Then from here, I can take the square root of both sides. But when I take the square root of both sides, I have to remember the plus or minus, okay? So that means that I have, I'm going to x plus 1 equals plus or minus the square root of 3 halves. I'm going to write it like that. And then subtract 1 from both sides. So x equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 3 halves. Well, I don't know that value. You know, it's not coming out a nice whole number, in which case you might be permitted to use the little red calculator to find those values. Okay? The first x value is going to be negative 1 plus the square root of 3 over 2. And the second one is going to be negative 1 minus the square root of 3 over 2. So, I don't have any calculator up here. <coughs> The reason you wouldn't be given a graphing calculator is because you could just graph it in the calculator and copy it onto the graph, you know? So hopefully you understand why that would be. Negative 1 plus the square root of 3 divided by 2, or you could even say 1.5, whatever you prefer. This x value is 0 0.2247. I'll just use 0.225, okay? <laughs> Obviously on this graph it's not going to be very accurate, right? And then negative 1 minus the square root of 3 over 2 is negative 2.225. So my first one I'm going to do is negative 2.225, so right about there. And my second one is about 0.225, which is right about there. Are you seeing the parabola? with those points. Like once you have all of those points, you pretty much should start seeing the shape. The only thing I can maybe do is add another point, right? Can I add this point here? Because I know that whatever's on the left is also on the right, okay? And then from there, take and graph it. And you see that it opens down. What would happen if I had something like x squared minus x mi uh, minus 1 as my function, and I wanted to find my x-intercepts and it doesn't factor. So I have something like this then. What's our other alternative if it doesn't factor? These are quadratics, so maybe what I have to use has that word in it. Yeah. The quadratic formula, yeah. So let's let's kind of just discuss that as well, because that you might feel more comfortable with that than that whole method that I did over there. Here, a is one, b is negative one, and c is negative one. Whoops. Do you remember the quadratic formula? X equals opposite of b plus or minus square root of b squared minus four ac all over two a. And you can pop the numbers in. Okay, so here I'd have x equals 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 minus 4 times 1 times negative 1, all over 2 times a, which is 2, 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2, and then you'd be at that same place right there. Okay, so again, I just wanted to remind you of that, not that I needed to do that on this problem, but you could come across where maybe you want to do that. Or maybe you're really bad at factoring and you like quadratic formula better. You know, you could do that as well. Um, but again, I just wanted to throw that out there in case you run across that. All right, so that's how for today. Today was about graphing, so we did two of those. 
uh, where just one was in standard form, one was in general form. Okay, you can always switch it to the other form if you prefer one form over another. And then the second thing are word problems. So I have two word problems here as well. It says you have 100 yards of fencing to enclose a rectangular section of a field. So I have a rectangular section. I'm going to put fencing around the outside of it. If I'm putting fencing around the outside of it, what geometric formula would I need for that? What's that called? The perimeter, right? The perimeter, I have the length, I have the width, I have the length, I have the width. The perimeter is when you add them all up, right? So the perimeter is two times the length plus two times the width. And they just told us the perimeter has to be 100. I'm going to use 100 feet of fencing because I want to make the maximum enclosure possible. Okay. It says, what are the dimensions of the rectangle if you want to enclose this? Now here's another word, area. So they mention area of a rectangle as well. What's the formula for area of a rectangle? Uh-huh. Length times width. What I want to do is I want to try to change this into using one letter only. And it doesn't matter. You can use L or W. And substitute it in over here. And then from there, you'll have a quadratic function that, you know, those are what we've been studying in this section. So does anybody have a preference? Should I solve this for L or W? L. L. Okay, so we're going to get L by itself. So we're going to subtract 2W from both sides. So I get 2L equals 100 minus 2W. And then divide everything by 2. I get L equals 50 minus W. Now take this and plug it in up here for your L. So I have the area equals the width times 50 minus W. So the area is 50W minus W squared. There is your quadratic. You finally have that squared there. Now, is this a parabola that opens up or down? It opens down. It does this, right? So doesn't it have a maximum? What I'm trying to do in this problem is find that point. If I can find that point, that's going to give me the maximum. Now, what does this point represent? The x value represents the width. The y value represents the area. Sometimes questions will say, what is the maximum area? And some will say, what are the length and width that would give the maximum area? So you have to make sure you answer the question. Okay, so for this right here, isn't this the vertex? Do I have a trick in how to find a vertex? Isn't the vertex negative b over 2a? Right? So now, <laughs> what's a and b in this problem? Because it certainly is not in the order of our quadratic equation. We talked yesterday that our quadratic function was in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. The a is whatever's with the x squared term. So in this problem right here, the a is negative 1. The b is whatever's with the just the x to the first power. So the b in this problem would be 50. And the c, there is no c. So to find it, I would actually have to say W instead of X here. W equals negative B, which is negative 50, over 2 times A, which is negative 2. That gives me 25. So what we just found is we found the X value of this point. Again, my equation, let me pull it down so that we can see it. 50W minus W squared. Now plug that in. So the area equals 50 times 25 minus 25 squared. Well, 50 times 25 is 1,250. 
minus 625, which is 625. So now, what is the question? And we've got a label when it's a word problem. So going back up, it says, what are the dimensions of the rectangle if you want to enclose this area? So this was in yards. The width is 25 yards. The area is 625 square yards. The length, I'd have to go up here and plug it in. The length is 50 minus the width, so the length is 25 yards. So the dimensions are 25 yards by 25 yards. The maximum area that I could close is 625 square yards. And then the final one. From the top of a building, a projectile is shot 400 feet high with a velocity of 64 feet per second. Its altitude, H, which they're calling height is H, after T seconds is given by H of T equals negative 16 T squared plus 64 T plus 400. What is the maximum height of the projectile? So here's the situation. I have a building right here. Someone's up here and goes and shoots it up into the air and then it comes back down. That's what this situation is. That guy right there, the y value would hold the maximum height. The x value would be the time it takes to get to that maximum height. So like this equation right here is t and h of t as far as my x and y values. So the x value is the time it takes, and the h or h of t value is the height that it gets. But wouldn't that be the vertex? Right? Again, it's the same thing, it's just the vertex. So to find the vertex of this, again, I need x or t really equals negative v over 2a. Negative v would be negative 64. 2 times a is negative 32. Divide those, I get 2. This is not the maximum height. This is only the time it takes to get to the maximum height. So now I have to plug it back in up here. h of 2 is negative 16 times 2 squared, which is 4, plus 128 plus 400. This is negative 64 plus 128 plus 400, which is 464. This here is the vertex. What is the maximum height? 464 feet. Sometimes it says, though, how much time does it take? in which case you do need the x value right there, okay? When does the projectile hit the ground? Well, here's the ground down here. It's saying this. Isn't that an x-intercept? Like, this right here is your y-axis and your x-axis. It hits the ground wherever there's an x-intercept. So to find an x-intercept of this right here, I take and I plug a zero in for the h of t. The reason for this is my x-intercepts are all a number and then zero. And then from here, I have to try to solve this. Well, does 16 go into 400? Like, can I factor a 16 out of there? 400 divided by 16, it does. So like this here, looks like that. Or you could just say, I'm gonna divide both sides by negative 16. Okay, you could do that. In which case you just have t squared minus 4t 
minus 25 equals zero. Here's that situation where it doesn't factor. Factors of 25 are 1 times 25 and 5 times 5. And none of those give me 4. So that's where I have to use the quadratic formula. So x equals opposite of b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So I have x equals 4 plus or minus the square root of 116 over 2. At which case you could plug that in. 4 plus. 4 plus the square root of 116. And then divide by 2 after you do that. You get 7.385. And then 4 minus the square root of 116 divided by 2, I get negative 3.385. Which answer is the one I'm looking for? The positive one, right. Can time be negative? Here's the situation in the picture. If this here continued down on this side, it would give that negative 3 point whatever, but we can't go back in time. Okay, so this here I didn't even need. This here, when will the projectile hit the ground? That many seconds. Okay, where did I get seconds from? It was mentioned up here in the problem. Same with the uh, feet were mentioned for this other part. Okay, so that finishes up section 3.1. So now you have the math Excel for 3.1. It's due tomorrow by the beginning of class. Okay, hopefully you got started on it last night and then some so you don't have as much to do tonight.